Ranking number one on YouTube is easy if you know about the three-step system I use to rank over 1,000 videos number one on YouTube, which got me over 200 million views and four play buttons. But here's what no one tells you about YouTube SEO. The perfect tags don't exist, and changing your file name to your keyword is a strategy based on hope. There's really only one thing you need to do, which is making your video the most relevant search result for when someone searches for that keyword. Because YouTube decides to rank videos based on how relevant they are in comparison to what someone searches for. If you struggle to believe me, I just ranked this video number one above a 4 million subscriber channel on an entirely new YouTube channel because I managed to make it the most relevant result using my three-step blueprint. In this masterclass, I'll walk you through my complete strategy to help you find perfect keywords people are actually searching for, analyze competition to make sure you can actually rank and apply SEO correctly using my proven optimization formula. By the end, you'll have everything you need to make your next video rank number one, no matter your subscriber count. And imagine waking up every morning, opening the YouTube studio, and seeing that overnight your video got another thousand views while you were sleeping. That's the power of ranking number one. Step one is finding keywords. Ranking your video all starts by finding a keyword you want to rank for. This is something many creators do wrong. They first make a video and then figure out what to title it and what to rank for. But this is the fastest way to fail. Instead, you want to find a keyword you can rank for and only then make your video. To find keywords, you need a YouTube keyword research tool. After testing all of them, I found vidIQ to be the best, and I'll show you why. vidIQ's keyword research tool has a feature called matching terms, which allows you to very quickly research your entire niche's keywords. Here's how. On vidIQ, start off by searching for a broad keyword in your niche. For example, if you're in the finance niche, you can type in things like finance or investing, make money, etc. I'll start off with finance. You'll then see these scores show up, but you want to ignore those. Instead, click on matching terms. When you do that, you'll see an entire list of keywords show up that include the initial keyword you searched for, in this case, finance. You can scroll through the list to find a keyword that is interesting to you and something you know you can make a great video about. When you find one, you want to click on it. I'll click on personal finance. Once you do that, it will now search for your new keyword. If then once again you click matching terms, it will show you more keywords that include your initial keyword in it, which is now even more specific. If I scroll through my list, personal finance spreadsheet catches my eye. I can click on this keyword and then once again click matching terms to get even more specific. Within just three clicks, I went from my general niche to very specific video keywords that my ideal viewer actually searches for. And that's why I love vidIQ. So I see spreadsheet personal finance template, spreadsheet versus personal finance app, and a ton more very specific keywords show up. However, finding keywords in your niche is just the beginning because now you need to figure out if this is a good keyword. A good keyword comes down to two things. First of all, are there enough people searching for this? And second of all, can you actually rank for it? This is where 99% of creators go wrong. They target keywords dominated by big channels and then wonder why their videos never get views. Here's what I do. After finding a potential keyword in vidIQ, which for the sake of this video, I'll go with personal finance spreadsheet. I search for it on YouTube and open the top three to five ranking videos that are currently ranking in a new tab. Then I analyze three critical factors. First of all, I wanna verify the search volume manually. I don't trust the search volume scores on any keyword tool and I prefer to check it myself. I do this by using vidIQ's historical data feature, which allows you to see how a video performed over time and how many views per hour this video is currently getting. I look at this with a logical perspective. If videos ranking high for a keyword are getting a consistent amount of views per hour over time, it's safe to assume people are searching for this keyword. Whereas if a video ranks number one, yet it barely gets any views per hour, that shows you that the search volume for that keyword isn't that high. And vidIQ's historical data feature will prevent you from choosing the wrong keywords that waste your time entirely. Here's why. If I find a keyword like how to see Spotify wrapped and find a video with 143,000 views in just five months, at first glance, this looks like an amazing keyword, right? But here's the critical mistake many creators make. They don't check if people are still searching for that keyword today. When I use vidIQ's historical data to analyze the views per hour by switching from total views to views per hour, I can see this video is currently getting zero views despite ranking number one. It received a huge spike of 3000 views per hour when it was first published. But now that traffic has completely disappeared. 
Someone without a historical data tool made this mistake and made a video trying to rank for this same keyword. The result? Their video only got 25 views total. This is why historical data is essential. It prevents you from creating content for keywords that are no longer being searched for. While the vidIQ extension itself is free, the historical data feature, which is what you really need, requires a paid account. But don't worry, I've negotiated an exclusive deal for the viewers of this full course, which means you can try vidIQ Pro with all premium features for just $1 for your first 30 days. This special offer is available only through my link in the description below. What's considered a good views per hour depends on your channel size. Obviously, the more the better, but I always look at it from a perspective of, if I get this amount of views per hour on this video, is that something I'd be happy with? If the answer is yes, I make the video. If not, I search for something better. Second, I look at the competition. Are the top ranking channels significantly larger than me? If so, that's a bad sign as it's very hard to outrank channels with millions of subscribers. If we analyze the competition for our keyword personal finance spreadsheet, we can see that all the channels here have hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers. And so that tells me this is most likely not the best keyword to make a video about. However, it's not impossible. I just outranked Gary V with 4 million subscribers with my first ever video. And I managed to do this because of the what I call matching keyword factor. This is crucial to rank because YouTube ranks videos based on the relevance of your video in comparison to what someone searches for. In this specific example, I can prove this to you by changing the search phrase to AI social media marketing tools, which I don't have as my title, but the current second ranking video has. And so if I search for that, he ranks number one and my video doesn't even show up. Why? Because his video is the most relevant result in comparison to what I searched for, which proves that that's how YouTube ranks videos. And so if high ranking videos currently don't use the exact keyword you found in their titles, you have an opportunity to outrank them simply by using the exact keyword in your title, making you the more relevant result. So this is a spectrum. The less matching keyword results, the better, as that makes it easier to rank. And the more, the worse. Let's check this for the keyword we found. To quickly check this, copy your keyword, click the three dots in Chrome, then click Find and search for it. This will highlight everyone who uses your keyword. You'll always get at least one result, which is your own search term on YouTube. So any number above one means that other videos in the search results are using that exact phrase in either their title or description. In our case, there's four results on this page, which isn't much. However, Matt with 3 million subscribers made a video including this exact keyword in his title. And so outranking him is gonna be near impossible. Based on that, you can make a calculated decision whether to make the video or not. Considering the competitors all have tons of subscribers and there is someone with 3 million subscribers who includes the exact keyword, I will not make a video for this keyword. So when this happens, just go back to vidIQ's matching terms and find a new keyword from the matching terms list. I found personal finance management app. So go to YouTube again, search for this, open the top ranking results, analyze the views per hour on these videos, then analyze the competition and the matching keyword factor which for this keyword looks very promising. The top ranking videos include small channels. So the competition is low. The views per hour these videos get are pretty solid. And most importantly, no one includes this keyword in their title, making it extremely easy for us to rank number one if we apply the SEO strategy from later in this video correctly. All that's left to analyze now is whether I can create a better video than what's currently ranking. Everything I teach you in this video will make you rank number one. However, if your video itself isn't what viewers want, it won't rank for months or even years to come, which is possible if you make this an amazing video. To do this, I read comments on the current ranking videos to identify what viewers liked and what they felt was missing, which gives me insights to create something better. Once you've found a great keyword, it's time to optimize your video for maximum visibility with SEO, which starts with your title. As just shown, include your exact keyword in your title, preferably at the beginning. This signals to YouTube that your content is highly relevant to that search query. For example, with my keyword personal finance management app, I'd make my title best personal finance management app in 2025. This includes the exact keyword I wanted to rank for, as well as gave relevance by adding 2025 in the title, showing the viewer this video will give them the best current option. For your description, I always place my keyword naturally in the first line. This is visible in search results and helps both YouTube 
and viewers understand what your video covers. Then incorporate related keywords throughout your description in a natural, readable way, not keyword stuffing. For this, I go back to vidIQ, type in the keyword I want to rank for, and then click on Related Keywords, which shows you keywords that are related, but don't specifically include the keyword you search for. Out of this list, I chose a few relevant keywords and wrote this description, which includes keywords in a natural way. Your thumbnail needs to complement your title and stand out from competitors. It should instantly communicate what viewers will gain from watching. For uploading, I use Thumbs Up TV to preview how my title and thumbnail will appear across different devices. As for tags, they play a minimal role in YouTube SEO today. YouTube even states they're mainly useful for commonly misspelled terms. Don't waste time here. I use a tool called rapidtags.io to generate relevant tags quickly. Simply type in the keyword you want to rank for, click generate, and then copy and paste these tags into your video. You're now ready to upload this and rank number one. I'll leave a full checklist to follow all steps in the description below, as well as this special $1 offer vidIQ link so that you can start analyzing keywords in the best way possible and rank your video number one. If you want to learn even more, click on my free YouTube SEO course right here. It's even better than this video you just watched.